Hello, Pastor Russell here at Homestead Village to have a conversation with Jane Reinhardt and Janice Carpenter, long-term members of Advent and St. Mark's churches, and of course, for the last 50 years, Good Shepherd. And uh, we're going to have a conversation about some of their memories, and, and uh, I will be largely off camera, but uh, the focus is, of course, on what they have to say to us, so enjoy. And Jane, if you would start by just introducing yourselves briefly, and then we'll start with some questions. Go ahead, Janice. Me? I'm Janice Carpenter. I was a member of St. Mark's Church, and I had quite a history, I suppose you'd say, being baptized there, being confirmed at St. Mark's, and also married there. And now I am starting in another 50 years, not for me, but for others in serving our Savior. I'm Jane Reinhard. I can't begin to match Janice's history with St. Mark's because I arrived at Advent in 1958 when I came to Millersville uh, to teach at Millersville, then State Teachers College. Um, and so I've been a member of there and officially since 1962 and continued with Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd. Well, thank you both for being willing to sit down and have this conversation. So, um, and uh, I, you were a lifetime member, uh, Janice, so of, of St. Mark's and, and Good Shepherd. You've been a part of those congregations your entire life. From, right. So you're baptized, confirmed, married, uh, that's a long history. Um, how would you describe uh, St. Mark's Church? If somebody like me had never been able to visit there, what was it like? Oh dear. Well, I would say very different from other years, but uh, no. It was a completely different service on Sundays, but my parents both taught Sunday school, and uh, he was superintendent for 20, 25 years, I believe. And uh, they were both involved with the church. I can remember them on Sunday afternoon sitting at the dining room table and counting the days uh, offerings and recording them and my father would every year in the fall invite the men of the congregation to a corn roast mm -hmm. at their home and the little spike and one thing I remember of that is uh, Jack Cowan trying to keep count of how many years of corn I had eaten. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he ever could keep up with me. <laughs> and another thing I recall was at my mother's funeral. We were singing the last hymn and there was a terrible storm came up. So the lights went out and the organ died. Uh -huh. So we, we just sang some hymns or waited out the storm, which was short lived, thank goodness. And then we proceeded to the cemetery for the final interment. But these are some of the memories I carry with me and think about. Mm -hmm. And also the uh, strawberry festival they would have mm -hmm. every, I guess it would be May or June. And it was a fun time, time for good fellowship. Yeah. But, uh, the church service, of course, was a lot different. And we've come a long way, and uh, I've just been very privileged to have been a part of this from way back and coming to this point where it's 50 years already yeah. for Good Shepherd. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. So you, so St. Mark's was South Ann Street in town in Lancaster on the east That's side. That's right. And you were up in the Lidditz Pike, so you drove 
into the church. A lot of folks, I understand, could walk in that neighborhood. A lot of the congregation was local there. Many of them were from right close to the church. Yeah. Right. And there was a, an orphanage catty-cornered across the street. The children's home. In fact, my father has a scrapbook with a picture mm. of that old mm -hmm. home. And I remember Sundays when we'd be going to church yeah. that uh, there would be women leading all these children. They'd walk up South Ann Street, I think either to the Catholic Church or down to First mm -hmm. Presbyterian. Some came to St. Mark's, I understand. I uh, think they did, yes. Yeah. And yes. were there other ministries that, that St. Mark's was, was known for? I know that they had some of those kids in the Sunday school. Were there other things that that would have been uh, well-known uh, things that they did? Well, they, uh, the men and women had groups, I can't remember the names of both of them, but mm -hmm. I think for the ladies, it was the Ladies' Aid Society. Mm -hmm. And this is another story that I remember, that uh, three or four of us women were taking an elderly lady to the uh, Lutheran home, which mm -hmm. was on East Orange Street at that time. Mm -hmm. And we were taking her to see it because she lived alone and we felt she should be in a more protective area. Well, we picked her up and took her there. And when we arrived, she said, oh, I've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had good times and uh, other than that, as I say, the church just wasn't as broad huh. with the outreach that we have today, and especially at Good Shepherd. Yeah. That that Lutheran home, incidentally, ended up becoming Luther Acres and located the Lidditz uh, at some future that's, point. That's correct. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Right. Years later. So. And Jane, so you were a member of Advent. You moved here in the late 50s to teach at Millersville uh, in the art department there and um, you became associated with Advent. What drew you to Advent? Why Advent? Robert Hart Beaver. Okay. He was a, a pastor at the time, and he came and called on me, and I was very impressed, and it didn't take me more than a second to decide I was going to attend that church. And it was a city church, a small city church, um, and drew from the local neighborhood mostly, not all, but not the, um, car driven congregation <laughs> that we have now. I mean, mm -hmm. And that was on, Advent was on East Orange, East Orange. Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the east side of the city. Had a small city. parking lot, which mm -hmm. was very helpful at the time. Mm -hmm. And no, but he was the one who impressed me so much. We're still friends today, mm -hmm. which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Jane, you, uh, you joined the congregation, but you also. Um, in the in the 60s at that point the constitution had the pastor as the president mm -hmm. and the highest lay office was vice president mm -hmm. and you became in the 60s i think the first female vice president oh i guess i was yes mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. i thought i remember I think of myself as a pioneer but i guess maybe that was <laughs> <laughs> um, and what was advent like well it was a neighborhood church and um Well, ordinary people. <laughs> I can't think of any, at that time in the beginning, as a programs that were re uh, reaching out to the community. But later on, after, well, uh, Pastor Beaver was only there for a couple of years. Uh, he had decided that he really was not ready to be called to the ministry and in fact told the people at the seminary that this was not his calling, but they convinced him to try to try it for a couple of years and specifically to go to Advent because apparently things weren't running too smoothly there. I didn't know anything about that at the time. And um, uh, I forget what you asked me. <laughs> uh, uh, about what it was like, and you were talking about outreach, I think, did Pastor oh. Schneider follow Pastor? Yes, uh, no, no, there Beaver? was another uh, okay. man in between, mm -hmm. I can't think of his name now, but 
the outreach became our vacation Bible school. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Schneider was very active in that. In fact, we got to a point where the attendance was so high, but he sent out buses through the city yeah. to pick up kids at the, at the corners and so forth. So that became a very big ministry and even blossomed into an evening session, which certainly wasn't as well attended as the daytime. But yeah. we even published a little newspaper every day, and uh, it became quite the big thing. And that, that continued when it moved to Good Shepherd, I understand. That yes. Some of that. And the, one of the other ministries I've heard about is uh, what's now um, UDS, United Disability Services, started oh, in Advent's basement. There was a, yes, a movie course. night for uh, Anna Mae Kern, I think, was the yes. uh, yeah, wanted to go to that. the movies, and she was not able to, to do so, uh, and uh, had uh, physical challenges, and so he ended up starting a group there. Um, I forgot about that. In the and congregation. Of course, it's now the it's huge. Yeah. Yes, I can't think of what their United name is. United Disabilities. Disabilities, Services. right. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, they had a special program not in the last couple of years where they invited Pastor Schneider. They were celebrating an anniversary, I guess, and he came to be part of it. I think it might have been their 50th or... I think so. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to test something out. I've heard people say Advent was known for its kind of worship and music or high liturgy mm -hmm. and that Pastor Harrison was the first pastor in Lancaster, Lutheran pastor to wear vestments. Yes, um, yes, I forgot about that. And St. Mark's had that big strawberry festival and lots of kind of community events right. types of things. When when the two churches came together, what gifts did each bring to the, the, the combined congregation? What, what do you think they each contributed? Well, I think one of the things is what you said, the music uh, ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's still important mm -hmm. at Good Shepherd. I mean, it's continued through all these years. And leadership, I, I would say, too, uh, from both congregations. So strong leaders in both places. Yes, and committed, yes. Committed leaders. Yes. And, of course, Pastor Schneider was the glue that held it all together, mm -hmm. so to speak, because he, uh, at the time, I guess, St. Mark's didn't have a pastor, and he would preach at both services, right. I mean, Advent and St. Mark's, and he's the one who managed to combine everything smoothly. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing from the Synod that it was the, one of the best mergers they'd ever seen in terms of, uh, you know, discord, not having discord and people just willingly merging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it sounds like Advent was outgrowing its space, Very much so. looking at relocating uh, outside the city where it was more, you know, a larger property. And then when he was interim pastor at St. Mark's, then those folks started talking together about being a part of it. And uh, so, but uh, it really is interesting when you both describe the two congregations, you talked about neighborhood congregations. Mm -hmm. So with people walking and invested. Right. How did everyone feel about leaving their neighborhoods and moving out of the city into a different place? I think there were very few that opposed it. Yeah, well, that's the way I think. What I'm thinking, I've never been part of the underground <laughs> congregation, so to speak. So I didn't hear if there was any discord and dissent. It was quiet enough that it didn't reach my ears. And I had the feeling that Janice said, it was very smooth, and mm -hmm. people realized that we were, we'd be much stronger together mm -hmm. than apart, uh, because, well, just we needed the strength. And Pastor Rus uh, Pastor Russell, <laughs> Pastor Schneider was the one who pulled it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Pastor Russell's the one that's kept it going. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, was there a relationship with? the other people in the other congregation that, that was there prior to the merger? Did, in other words, did the churches do things together or cooperate, uh, or this was really a new relationship that was forming? I think they agreed with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I don't remember any specific events mm -hmm. that brought everybody together. I mean, there eventually were. We worshiped together for a while in, I guess, both 
church buildings, as I recall. Both locations. Both oh, locations, yes. yes okay. Before it all became yeah. official. And then when it did, when we did merge, the name was Advent slash St. Mark's. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until we became, moved to the new facility that um, the Good Shepherd name was chosen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. I remember the many breakfast we held up at Holiday Inn. Oh, yes. And then we marched down to the future side of Good Shepherd, banners flying. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that was when we had, like, the groundbreaking and the dedication and so forth. But mm -hmm. um, the Holiday Inn was our meeting place. Mm -hmm. And, um, well... And that was... They were very gracious. Greenfield Road was called Hempstead Road then. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and we have a lot of pictures, of course, of the uh, crucifer and the cross and banners and the whole crowd of people walking down. Coming down street. through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, did when the merger happened, were there people who didn't come along from St. Mark's, let's say, Janice? There were several... Yes, I know my uncle was very adamant about the location. He had us at the wrong end of town. And okay. he, he kept arguing that it was to be Hempland. Well, oh. that was at the west end of town, and we were going to be in the east end, but they finally got it straightened okay. out. But uh, I know there was a cousin of mine who left the church, but she lived right beside one in town. Okay. So I can see that made an easy transition right. for her. But you had said something, Jane, about the minister called on you. Yes. Pastor and Peter. I remember when I served on church council uh -huh. that sat Sunday afternoons, two of us were to go out and visit the people who attended worship that Sunday. We did that. I think we did that when it became Good Shepherd. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, I yes, started out with the church been, council people. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a much broader program that we have now mm -hmm. than back not as many people to visit. <laughs> that's right. That's but Janice, right. were you on council when it was St. Mark's or when no. it was Good Shepherd? Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd. Okay. Good Shepherd. Okay. All right. I remember when I was council president. I guess I like to get things done. I didn't want to waste time. <laughs> one point, Mel Shaw, one of the members, was on the council and went, whoo, 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 whoo. <laughs> like it was a motor, uh, it was a train. <laughs> he meant it as a compliment, knowing Mel, but um, <laughs> the things that stick in your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, as far as once you arrived at Hempstead Road uh, became Good Shepherd. Uh, building was constructed. There was an initial building, and there have been, of course, uh, additions made since mm -hmm. then. But um, what did it feel like to come together in a new space? What was that like? I, I thought it was an invigorating, a very exciting time. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. I can remember the dedication service. I, Mel Shaw and I had worked very closely together, and we were both so emotional that day. We just embraced one another huh. in, the, in the excitement of what was going on. Mm -hmm. And Mel was the oversaw the building. Yes. Oh. Every day he would be there during his lunch hour, yeah. checking on things. Mm -hmm. yeah, so Every he had a lot lunch. invested in it, too. Oh, my, yes. Yeah. Every lunch hour, he would go from his workplace mm -hmm. out to the site. Mm -hmm. Check on things. Yeah, he was very thorough and was, remained invested like that even after the building was constructed because he would, as you know, do all kinds of odd jobs that needed to be mm -hmm. taken care of, electrical or plumbing or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he was a uh, part of Advent Church. He was Church. Advent, yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that came together. Um, what, what stories, what things stand out that would be interesting to hear? What, what, what else, what memories do you have that uh, kind of stand out for you? Hmm. That's hard to say. Well, I'll start. Uh, there was a, the day that we moved the, the contents of Advent Church to the new building, 
I took down from a shelf in a classroom a statue of Martin Luther and Pastor Russell, sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Pastor Schneider, I said to him, what do, you, what do you want me to do with this? Well, he was in a hurry and flustered, and I said, oh, throw it away. Well, I wasn't about to throw Arthur Martin Luther in the trash, <laughs> so <laughs> I took it home with me and hung it on my bedroom wall. Well, some years later, Pastor Lamparder, um, yes, he was still living in a Good Shepherd, and one day he said to me, Jane, do you have any idea what happened to that s statue of Martin Luther that was at St. Mark's? <laughs> I said, sure, it's hanging on my bedroom wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I naturally gave it up, and it's still hanging in the library. Yes, Martin Luther, Martin room. Luther room at Good Shepherd. <laughs> 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 so, I you, rescued Martin Luther. <laughs> you said he was from Advent, Bob Lampard. No, or? no, he was from... St. Mark. Mark's. I thought that at one time you told me he was from Madden. No, well, I probably uh, Mel, knew. Mel Schaub was from Madden. Mel Schaub. Yes, yeah. I, I knew he yeah. was. Well, I probably just got it mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we all do that. A any hopes and dreams? Uh, any, I'm sorry, any any stories, Janet, that come to spring to your mind at this point? Yeah, really. Mm -hmm or highlights or important things along the way? I sang in the choir. Mm -hmm. I was part of the choir. And uh, something else I was going to say about, oh, the number of young men we had go into mm -hmm. the ministry mm -hmm. from St. Mark's. There was, oh, going way back, my parents knew them, yeah. Stolde and Hepner. And then there was Trumpeter, mm -hmm. and then the younger generation, Paul Peel and Jack Lyons. Mm. Bob Lamparder and Bob Ray Rodens. Yes, yeah. yes. There was a, with both Advent and St. Mark's and Good Shepherd, there have been lots of people going, uh, that have gone to seminary mm -hmm. from the congregation. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I don't, I don't know all those names that you just mentioned, Janice, but I know even in my time at Good Shepherd, I think we've had something like seven go to seminary or, or right. I, something in that ballpark. But uh, yeah, it's. There's Jay Ekman and who mm -hmm. was the old oh, book, the book? Uh, Gary Book and Paul Adler and Valerie Alafever Hughes. Mm -hmm. and, um, oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm, I'm, now I'm going to not be able to pull the names out of my brain, but. Uh, yeah, good, a good number of, of folks. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you, we've, we've looked at the last 50 years of, of Good Shepherd as a congregation, it's the merged congregation, what are you most proud of about Good Shepherd? What is it that you're proud of? I think it's outreach program, encouraging people from the community or elsewhere to participate in our um, worship services and um, the music program of course mm -hmm. is outstanding mm -hmm. and um, well I think all the efforts to get people involved in different groups mm -hmm. uh, in Sunday school our day camp program was a big outreach to the community and providing um, reasonable rates with high quality activities and uh, philosophy, so to speak. Mm -hmm. the, well, we've always put a lot of emphasis on Christian education. Mm -hmm. I've been in the Christian education field ever since, uh, <laughs> ever. <laughs> 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 and, oh, I remember one time when it was Pastor, before Pastor Schneider, I can't think of his name at the moment, but anyway. As I was walking out of the church, he said to me, would you like to teach Sunday school? <laughs> <laughs> and I think I said no, but I thought that's a very important position and it just cast it out so casually to someone where you're, whose hand you're shaking. That upset me, I, I just, and I said no. I thought it was, and I always made a point as chairman of Christian education, if I was looking for new teachers, I went and called on them at home. Mm -hmm. uh, 
to, well, make it more personal and, and important. So that always stayed in my mind. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, is there anything you would add as far as what you're proud of? I think the music program at Good mm -hmm. Shepherd, and mm -hmm. they say many people have, not many, but several have joined our church because of the music program mm -hmm. we have to offer. You're right. Mm -hmm. And it's quite interesting, the gal who takes care of me in here, I, her name is Courtney, and I can't remember, her husband's name was Steve. We were talking one day and somehow music came up. She said, oh, that's my church. I said, where do you go? She said, Good Shepherd. Oh, <laughs> It's strange how you meet up mm -hmm. with these people, but mm -hmm. she said, I know I should get back, but we've moved to E-Town. Huh. But uh, O-D-M-A-T-O or something like that, it was an odd name, hmm. but she, she remembered you. <laughs> I said, you're too young for me, but uh, <laughs> I, I think to the Sunday school program, Christian Ed, as mm -hmm. you have said, mm -hmm. Do they have many children in Sunday school? Well, before the pandemic, let's say not as many as we would like. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sports uh, seems Everything to take. right now is, of course, being done differently. So we're, yes. we've had a year of all remote things and online, and so it's a whole different world we're living in still. But yeah. And you're right about the sports. There's. So okay. many. You were right about the sports. Oh yeah. Taking away from they Sunday do. school. Mm -hmm. So, um, hopes and dreams that you have for our future, next fifty years. Mm -hmm. Anything you would you would want to say? Well, that the congregation will continue to grow, and I'm amazed at all the different categories that the different groups that people can join. Mm -hmm. And do they get many in attendance? Our small groups, you mean? Yeah, that's been very... Uh, Pastor Wilson's done a great job helping us with that, and uh, we've had good participation, uh, good numbers, and, and, good. and we're um, offering a new, you know, a couple new groups, uh, so it's, it's growing um, as we sit here, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I have... I just want to see what we're doing continue and build on it, because it certainly has a good foundation. Um, at the moment, I can't think of anything to add to it, but because you've covered it very well, okay. the needs. Mm -hmm. Well, you meaning, and Pastor Carlisle, and <coughs> all the leaders. We have some good leaders. Yeah, we are blessed with good leaders. Yes, yes. Yeah, very committed and. and creative and, and capable people, Yes, uh, which seems to be a part of the legacy of, uh, I think that is part of what we've been blessed with as a congregation mm -hmm. for years, so mm -hmm. uh, generations, uh, including the two of you. Mm -hmm. So thanks for taking the time to, to talk a bit and to remember and to help us just uh, think about the, the two predecessor congregations, but also take stock of the blessings that we have now. and. May God uh, bless the two of you and bless us as a congregation richly in the years ahead. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed hearing what Janice had to say. And oh, yes. I'm glad we could share it. Yeah. It was much more better. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Much more interesting being than being alone, sing singles. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you for asking us. <laughs>